Hello, spooky friends, and welcome to the holiday episode of the Scaryish Podcast. Woo! Uh, I'm Robin Grace. This is Adam Diaz. Hello. And uh, Merry Christmas to everybody, I guess, right? Indeed. Or Happy Holidays. Or Happy Holidays, you know. However you want to do it. However I actually, you celebrate. Yeah. I have something written into my script, so I don't miss any of them. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, absolutely. I actually think that our story time episode this week will come out on Christmas itself. But as for topic episodes, this is definitely going to be our holiday-inspired topic episode, at least on my end. So, uh, absolutely, Merry Holidays to all you <laughs> folks. So, yeah. So, I think it's cute because this year we are trading places. If you are new and haven't read, or read, you don't read a podcast, if you haven't listened to our entire catalog or anything yet, uh, we, last Christmas, last holiday season last christmas i gave her my heart oh fuck and the very next day she gave it away that's the stupidest lyric i swear because you can't give away someone else's heart it's not like you're gonna go to someone and be like hey just so you know so and so is in love with you now because i gave away your heart it should be threw it away that would make sense i hate that song because every time i hear it i'm just (laughs) like it's just a bad lyric doesn't make any sense but anyways back to robin all right so uh last holiday season I did like a Christmas murder type. We did miracles topic. and murder yeah. last year. So, um, and it was kind of a little bit of a downer, maybe. But uh, I think it's cute because we're trading spaces, trading spaces, trading topic, trading places, which is a Christmas movie. Is it really? Absolutely. Oh wow! Oh well, we're hitting all them bases today. So uh, I'm going to be covering the not crime section. So what I'm doing is just. A cute cryptid that I find um, absolutely endearing. And so, then yeah. uh, you're stuff. gonna be doing the crime. Yeah, Robin's doing cryptid, I'm doing crime. And I think you're going first, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. I'd like to hear about this because I got the pictures that you sent. Don't they look cool? And uh, yeah, they do kind of look cool. They look maybe slightly festive for this season, but I need to hear a description of it because it also looks like someone with their jeans tucked up way too high. <laughs> So I'll That's let you me right now. I'll let you take over. Um yeah, so, I mean if you folks would like to hear last Christmas's episode, uh you guys can go ahead and do that after this episode. So so listen to this one, go back and listen to that one, to the season, do whatever you want. Uh all right. So this year I'm I am going to be covering the I guess brighter side of the episode even though you have said that yours isn't necessarily I didn't get too um, heavy of crimes. I got stuff that's kind of funny for okay. my crimes cuz I I didn't want to get like I didn't want to go as balls deep into murder <laughs> as you did last year, so we'll see. All right. So, uh yeah, so by bright side I just mean I I picked something cute and silly. Um and this episode I'm going to be covering something that I totally thought we had actually covered before. Um but it's called the Fresno Nightcrawler, not to be confused with the Dark Watchers that Adam has covered in the past. Uh, we, we weren't sure. We went back and looked through the list. Yeah. And then as I was Googling, I'm like, oh, yeah, I've never covered this. So if you've never covered this, then we've never covered this. Cool. Uh, so this cryptid has actually been recorded on video, which I think is so cool. There's actual footage of these creatures walking uh, around in California Obviously not in, like, downtown L.A. or, like, Hollywood-type stuff, but, you know. It's actual footage of them at a cafe drinking <laughs> a an overpriced coffee, so it's pretty amazing. Uh, there is one instance in Fresno, California, uh, obviously the area in which this particular cryptid gets its name. Um, and then there's a sighting that occurred in Yosemite National Park in California. And that's not to be confused with Yellowstone, because we totally got it confused when we were... Uh, talking about our topics and, and, uh, we, I was just like, what states does, uh, Yosemite cover? And I was looking it up and it's just California. And Adam's like, there's no way. And it's because Yellowstone covers yeah, pretty like, quickly. I was like, it's not, it's gotta be something else. I was like, oh, it's Yellowstone. It's another Y national park. Yeah. Cause so. Yellowstone covers so much. I was much like, it's area. not the one that's going to kill everyone eventually. Yeah. <laughs> it's the other one. Uh, so. The first sightings of these nightcrawlers began back in the 1990s, apparently, or I guess as a uh, squirrely Dan would say, allegedly. allegedly. Um, and it really hasn't been commonly sighted like a number of cryptids that we've covered in the past where um, one person sees it and then everyone starts seeing this thing. You know, it's nothing like that. Uh, many of the alleged videos of these creatures have been debunked by video a- uh, analysis, 
but the original seems to be legit through analyzing that footage. And uh, you can actually look it up on YouTube or or just the internet, whatever you want to do. But they actually show you, like, the footage, and then they change it to this, like, embossed-looking footage, and you can still see the creature walking um, through the embossed-looking footage, which I guess is a way they use uh, to an- analyze the video to make sure it's not, like... Edited or yes. doctored in some way. Yeah. I thought that was really strange, but also, at the same time, really interesting, because I haven't done any research or any of that stuff into video analysis or any of that, you know? So it was it was kind of cool to learn something new, learn something different, because we have researched so many different topics, but we're always learning new things. Okay. So the video footage from Fresno in 2007 seems to be uh, from a security camera that belonged to a man simply known as Jose there was no sources that I saw, at least, um, that had his last name on there. I know a lot of people named Jose. I'm going to have to ask all of them now if it was them. <laughs> the camera was facing the, his front lawn from his garage, and it was so that he could figure out why his dogs were barking or um, things like that. So if it, it was an intruder or, say, an animal was walking around outside, or, or I guess, do animals loiter? I don't know. If th- There's just things out there that really shouldn't be out there that he could catch it on camera. And he just happened to catch something that really shouldn't be out there. I feel like so, that's how a cryptid should be photographed. It shouldn't be like, I was out in the woods for absolutely no reason, and I saw the lizard man of South Carolina walk by. I just want to sing the theme song for Zaboomafu right now. I hate you. <laughs> Um, okay. So the day after the footage was captured, he hadn't, he didn't see it that day or that night. He went and looked at it the next day. And so the next day, he saw these strange creatures walking across his lawn. And it freaked him out so much that he went and called the police, which I would do too. That's exactly what I would do. Yeah, where it's like, dude, what the F is this? Something's random... trespassing on my lawn. And how these things look, it's like, are there people on my lawn? Like, are, are should I be worried that there's, these there's I don't know, teenagers causing problems or, or you know, playing pranks? Who knows? Um, the police couldn't figure out what it could possibly be. And then, like with any crazy cryptid encounter that we've covered in the past, because we've covered quite a few, once it's made known to the public, it kind of takes off and becomes this crazy phenomenon. It kind of took on a life of its own, I guess. People just started talking about these crazy things that they saw. But the difference is, it wasn't like people were seeing it left and right now. There weren't a million sightings of this thing, like when uh, but one Bigfoot sighting happens, then everyone's like, yo, I saw Bigfoot too. Right. That This did not happen with this particular cryptid, which I think is really interesting. So this video appeared to capture what looks like two figures. And it's uh, like you see one creature walking across his lawn by itself, and then nothing happens for a little while. But you see, like, towards the back of the video, there's something else standing there, right? And then it starts walking across the lawn, too. So I just, it's really interesting video to watch. I recommend you guys check it out. It's pretty cool. I wonder how Um, many security cameras or closed-circuit TV systems have actually captured evidence of, like, aliens or cryptids or ghosts, but no one ever checked the footage. (laughs) So it's like, oh, yeah, the truth was out there. We just didn't look at it because we were just not reviewing our footage. Oops. I wonder if anybody ever does. Like review actually, footage, yeah. Some people, I mean, it's like when you work retail, you know, you're required to examine like X amount of time on your, uh, you know, security cameras to make sure that nothing strange is going on. But you're not going to watch every single minute in real time because you just can't. Yeah, that's true. I'm like, I'm not going to watch overnight footage at a retail location. I, I don't think anyway. And I just watch on fast forward. I'd be like, is anyone having sex? Is anyone stealing stuff? No. Okay, moving on. So in this footage, there are two. The this original footage, there's two beings that are recorded and it's it's kind of hard to see any details of their upper body at all it's extremely thin and white with no discernible arms uh they both look pretty tall and lanky but that's through my untrained eye that they look tall you know because i'm just looking at this video they look tall but 
they're supposedly only around four feet tall in this. So, I mean, I just looks tall in the video itself because I'm yeah, because I'm just looking at this small screen and because they are so thin and how they're walking, they appear tall. Um, the footage also makes it look like they're kind of billowing when they walk, which is so crazy because they walk like a cocky old man where they're like, they got their chest kind of puffed out, but they're also leaning back. And they do that thing while, while you walk, like you move your arms forward, but not like side to but side. But they don't have arms. It's, it's almost like, yeah, but like, I'm, what I'm saying is picture a person that's like leaning back that like does that thing where you like move your arms slowly back and forth because you're just walking like at your leisure. Mm-hmm. But it's like, just take the arms off. And it's like, that's <laughs> the kind of walk it has going. It's very, very interesting in in that you didn't see that first video, though. So the original video in the original video there, they walk a lot faster than well, that's terrifying than the one that I showed you. Um, yeah. So they they kind of walk really quickly in comparison to the second one, which we'll get into. And in this one, their upper bodies are really, really small looking like because of the low quality of the video. Uh, any details with that upper section above the legs is kind of lost and you ca- you can't really see anything. Um, and then in March of 2011 at Yosemite National Park, park officials were putting up cameras in an attempt to catch like trespassers or um, like teenagers that want to cause trouble or graffiti or damage any property. They really never expected to catch what they saw. And that's the video that I showed you. So they caught these pale, small, armless creatures walking down one of the paths in the park. And this time there was one that was much smaller than the other. And the the one that was much smaller was only like one, uh, only a half a meter tall, which is like one and a half feet, a little bit over one and a half feet. It's like the baby Yoda, the child. The larger ones seem to be approximately one and a half meters tall, um, which is closer to that four feet height, four foot height. <laughs> I right. don't know. Um, most of the height goes into the legs. So they're like all legs. Uh, and I hear long legs ex- is sexy. You know, everybody says long legs are and sexy. These things are like the sexiest creatures <laughs> imaginable because they're like all legs. All legs. Um, but when I look at these, I'm like, man, I'd want to cuddle those. They're kind of cute. Wow. They don't. That's a weird reaction to they, have to a cryptid. It's just not, it's not scary looking like, um, I, I, what I imagine Mothman would actually look like. I think I would cuddle the shit out of Mothman. No way. Moths are so soft. I would cuddle him immediately. But he's got pecs of steel. You don't know that? And but- if he did, I'd be totally fine with that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so these things look pretty cool. Um, you could clearly see the feet of the creature in this video, like how they walk. You could see way more detail in it, at, at least to me. Um, it seems like you could see way more detail. It also looks like there's webbing of some sort that connects like from the knees to whatever could possibly be considered the upper body. Um, in this video, these entities are much slower while they walk. Um, like they kind of walk with a swagger, maybe. That's the billowing one that I saw, where it's just like... Yeah. Um, it's my sound effect for them. I don't know if it's accurate. There's a really strange cadence to how they walk. It's just not how an average, everyday person would walk, um, because they swing their legs out. But maybe that's because their legs are so long that they got to swing their legs out so so far to, to just... I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then in this video, they are just as billowy as the first. And it, it just looks like they're wearing clothes or something because they're flapping and it looks like there's wind. I don't know. It's you really... You know what they look like? They look like a wacky, waving, inflatable, arm flailing <laughs> tube man if they didn't have arms and they weren't anchored to the ground. And obviously they were like four feet tall. That's seriously what they kind of remind me of, except like slow motion movements. And there's a, um, I guess, direction a method to how they walk there's not they're not just like swinging their bodies back and forth randomly yeah they're not anchored so it's like they have a purpose it's like they're going somewhere i actually got chills watching the the this second video because i watched it a oh, way too many times <laughs> but i was just like i gotta watch it over again now i gotta replay it uh and i actually got chills because it looks so disconcerting because it doesn't look natural um 
You can see the quote unquote heads of these creatures much better in the second video. Um, so much so that it is really creepy, which is why I got chills. I was like, this, this is weird. This actually looks like some sort of creature we just don't know about yet. Yeah. And it's said that they have two small eyes, but from any of the footage that I watched, I couldn't see these eyes. Um, uh, but maybe I just wasn't looking close enough or something, or I don't have the technology to look close enough. Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't see the eyes though. I am just, absolutely entranced by the flowiness of these legs. It, it, it looks really cool. I wonder if the the flowy skin, quote unquote skin, is either part of their body or um, if they're wearing clothes. Maybe it's part of their skin and they have some cool flowy alien skin or they are wearing clothes because there's no way we're the only entities in the world universe that wear clothes you know maybe they make their own clothes i've seen lots of cats and dogs wear clothes nowadays so yeah and that's our fault <laughs> yeah that is human's fault 100 percent um once again as soon as the media got hold of uh this footage the fresno night crawlers was on everyone's mind again and people were talking about it again and it was just really interesting how similar the two sightings were almost identical even in the way that they moved and and looked because they're both these long-legged pale creatures and how they walked was just it's like almost exactly the same it's crazy unfortunately though though there were other sightings those weren't captured on any security cameras at all some people claim to have seen them but it's like there's no hard evidence like these videos um these weren't the first times that they were sighted, and there were other sightings in between. Just These were just, like, the ones where it's like, this is evidence, The you big know? one, the documented yeah. ones. In 2004, a 17-year-old was driving along in Manchester, Indiana. They saw what they described as a strange creature with long, thin legs. It was humanoid, but not necessarily human. Like, there's no way it was human. Um... It moved in a disjointed fashion, and they described it as being similar to those seen in Fresno, um, except this one was over six feet tall. Apparently, a second car drove past as well, also seeing that same creature, and um, all three people, so the, uh, the other car had two people in it, and all three of them came together to discuss, like, what they saw and what they were all had just drove past seeing, you know. And they all agreed that it was not human. And once they finished talking about it or whatever, they all kind of drove off and were totally like, what the hell did Why we Why wouldn't they see? call the cops? What are you going to tell them? It's like you should call someone. Like, if it's wildlife, like, hey, there's a giant thin bear walking around. Aww. Someone should do something about that because they could cause an accident. Like, I just drove by it and it freaked me the fuck out. There was a theory at one point that the Nightcrawler may have had something to do with local Native American legends. Uh, the story went that these creatures always existed on Earth, even before human beings ever existed. And in these supposed myths, and I say supposed because some say that these legends are pure hogwash, they are not true, they're Absolute just debunked. Absolute porn swoggle. Um, these supposed myths describe the night crawlers as creatures with long legs that allow them to move through swamps and bogs and pretty much any difficult sluggy swampy terrain and they're described to be these swamp world beings uh, legends have it that the entities are back again to rebuild a connection between the current state of humanity all, all you know, the human race and the natural world and natural order type of thing um, some, Good luck, dogs. <laughs> some say they're like a type of peace bringer. Uh, and again, take that with a grain of salt because it seems like it's been said otherwise. Like, this isn't real. This is stupid. I don't know why people claim that. You know, that's just something people theorize or have made up the story of. No one really. There's no basis yeah, for it. Yeah, there's no basis for it. Um, it's thought to be some type of alien or extraterrestrial entity. Uh, and I know a lot of cryptids end up in that category where it's like, it's aliens, you know? Uh, though they do look fairly humanoid and move in a human-like manner, 
analysts believe that they seem far too small and move way too awkwardly to be human. Uh, when watching the video, it looks almost like they're limping really fast. You know, it, at least the one, the first original one, that's what it looked like to me. That explains the disjointed nature with how they walk. Yes. Uh, I, but I don't know. I just think it's really in- interesting. And it's definitely something that I recommend you guys check out if you've never watched that video because I had never actually seen the videos of it before. I've heard of these creatures. I've seen drawings of them. I'd never seen the videos and they are so cool. Um, if they are aliens though, why would they be here? You know, and why is it so rarely seen? It's so interesting. The idea that these were caught on camera, like definitive video of these things walking on camera, but it's not like sighting after sighting after sighting after sighting, like so many other cryptids that we've covered. It's such a strange thing. Maybe they are aliens and it's all a cover up. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I like how you always jump to it's aliens and a cover up all at once. <laughs> then there's the idea that it could be ghosts. I want to think it's more like an alien possibility than ghosts because it just doesn't sit well with my de- delicate sensibilities. I don't know. It, it it just seems like a really macabre way for a human being to come back and be a ghost. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it looks nothing like it, it did when it was alive. It's like my brain can't process like if it were a ghost, why would it look like big long legs? You know? But we don't know what ghosts actually look like. You know, they could be these creatures with big long legs, and that's what. You figure there'd be more are. sightings of them in that case, which is just weird. The whole thing is weird. There have been a fair share of fascinating and horrific deaths in Yosemite and Fresno. Jesus Christ! And lots. What a of, weird sentence. <laughs> lots of ghost stories about the areas. Um, it's thought that if it were ghosts, maybe the ghosts are spirits of people. That are wearing clothes, and that's why they look kind of flowy, you know? I don't know. These theories are getting thinner and thinner. (laughs) I know. Uh, From all the drawings and footage, I think it looks really cute. It looks really cool, like some sentient pair of parachute pants or something. Some think that maybe it's a new species of primate or some... Primate? (laughs) New evolution of primate, huh? (laughs) A new Pokemon game coming out. Good marketing. (laughs) Uh, Some people just think maybe it's some new animal that has is kind of walking around you know and it's so rare who knows uh some think it's a deer that's standing upright which is bullshit look at these videos that is not a freaking deer uh maybe a bird walking like a crane or a person on stilts in big old pants uh maybe a costume you know i don't know i don't think it's a bird i don't think it's a deer standing on its hind legs maybe it's someone in stilts Maybe. It'd have to be a smaller person, though, obviously, since yeah. they're only, like, rating it at four feet tall or right. whatever. Uh, I think, I like to think that it's just some pants that got up and grew a mind of their own, and they're just like, oh, yeah, walk around town. And that's why they're so rare to be seen, because it's, maybe it's like Toy Story. Because pants don't do that Maybe normally. it's like Toy Story, when, when the people come in to the area, they're like, Hold on, Andy's coming, and they all just flop down. Everyone falls down. <laughs> uh, no, maybe it's just may- maybe it's some type of tech, new tech or something. It's fancy tech pants that they're testing out. Who knows? Um, due to the nature of these creatures, it's thought that they are incredibly difficult to recreate, like the the way they walk and the way they flow. That it's just something that you can't just pull on a pair of big old pants and walk around, pretend you're that thing. Um, So it is like a brain scratcher to this day. People really don't know what it is. Uh, They haven't been, there haven't been any other sightings or strange videos of them actually recorded. Uh, There also have never been any actual encounters. No one's actually come across these before. Uh, There are no close encounters of the Nightcrawler kind. Um, though the videos make them seem absolutely harmless, who knows what they're actually like? Because if there's been no close encounters, you don't actually know. Um, it does seem like they have no interest in human contact whatsoever because they haven't had any, uh, maybe they just like to take strolls. I mean, that's what pants are for, right? I hate you. (laughs) So much. I was like, well, they have long uh, legs. They need to stretch their legs, surely. Uh, from video evidence, it doesn't seem like these things like to travel alone. Both videos have them traveling in pairs. 
um, which I think is pretty cute. No one wants to travel alone, I mean, right? They're, they're walking at night. They got to stay safe. Uh, it's much different than a lot of the other cryptids that we've covered or heard about most often, like Bigfoot or Nessie. They're, they're singular creatures that are out there alone. We the, think. We think. Despite the strange nature of these creatures, they have gained their own level of fame and appreciation. There are statues and effigies of these creatures located in different areas of California. No one uh, really knows exactly where, apparently. I was reading uh, a couple places. They're like, we don't know where these statues actually are, but they exist. Um, Sounds like graffiti art. It's only a matter of time before people will find them and destroy them and take them down. <laughs> Call back to monolith episodes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's the Fresno Nightwalkers. Right on. That's pretty good. I've not heard of them. Like, I kind of have heard the suggestion regarding the topics. I've never heard of them in casual conversation with people before, so it's nice to know what they are. And uh, yeah, the stuff you sent me is definitely super creepy. It's cool uh, to look at. Cool I'll be uploading the pictures, obviously, to our Instagram slash Facebook. I'm not sure if I can get the GIF that Robin sent me uploaded, but uh, I'll give it a shot. And if not, you're going to have some pretty solid screenshots, and I think that's pretty good, too. Right on. So before we move into my topic, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And we are back. So this week, we are obviously very aware of the fact that this will be the topic episode that releases prior to Christmas. Uh, Robin and I both celebrate Christmas, so it's definitely the holiday that is always on our minds around this time. And we do like to incorporate a little bit of that into the episode. Our previous episode, like I mentioned, had me covering Christmas Miracles, which was fun. I actually have done it twice in a row. We had Christmas Miracles 1 and 2, two years consecutively. Uh, and like we mentioned last year, Robin covered Christmas Murders, and I was kind of jealous because although it was pretty morbid, it also was pretty interesting. So this year, I'm covering the true crime side of things. Uh, so strap on for what I'm calling Christmas Crimes. So first, I want to say, I deliberately focused on crimes that were not murders. We can all agree that Robin nailed that topic last year. And uh, the only murder I kept coming across, because I wasn't really searching too hard, was the John Benet Ramsey disappearance. And I was like, that's definitely a topic all on its own, so I'm definitely not going to try and lump that in with a bunch of other topics. Uh, plus, I did not want to overlap with things that Robin covered last year, so I figured this was the easiest way to stay safe. The second thing I want to say is just because Robin and I uh, are Christmas celebrators does not mean we begrudge any other holidays like we mentioned earlier. So just Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Holidays, Happy Solstice, Happy anything I might have left out. We love you all and we want to celebrate with you. So thank you for listening and Happy Holidays. So let's get into the crimes. It's funny because when I started researching this topic, I thought to myself, how does one wind up in a situation where you're committing a crime on or right around Christmas? And I'm pretty sure I've re I've referenced this before, but it's a very trapped in paradise premise in my brain when I think of that. And I don't know if you know what that movie is, but it's a movie from 1994. It has Nicolas Cage, John Lovitz, and Dana Carvey as three brothers who attempt a bank robbery on Christmas Eve in this tiny town known as paradise why would they do that on christmas eve because it has the most money in the bank on christmas oh eve. gotcha it, side note it's a silly movie it's cheesy it's totally a 90s movie it is also absolutely wonderful i fucking love this movie is it a comedy it's 100 percent a comedy i'm going to have to watch it now john lovitz and dana carvey are hilarious nicholas cage is the lead and he's really good in it too the entire movie from start to finish i'm just like Every time I watch it, I'm like, I should probably just change the channel. And I watch the whole thing. I'm like, God damn it. That movie is so good. Um, outside of that, I can't really think of how I would wind up committing a crime. Like, bank heist is the only thing that ever pops into my head for, like, a Christmas crime. And then it really hit me as I was doing research. People have to be around their families a lot on Christmas. This year, not as much as others, but still. And I know that Thanksgiving is a very heavy... Uh, like domestic violence between family members thing due to like, uh, you know, things being brought up at the dinner table and things of that nature. So I was like, well, I guess it kind of makes sense that that would happen during Christmas as well. So the first story takes us back to the long, long ago known as 2008. So Christmas 2008, a young man named Heath Blum sat at his home on 1247 South Street with a gift in his lap. He had been a good boy, and he had asked Santa for a remote-control airplane. 
He had hoped so deeply to get that remote control airplane, and now here he sat with his gift in his lap, ready to be unwrapped. So this anticipation was real. And I think we can all kind of picture this young man, and we know that feeling of thinking you're about to get this gift that you really want. And in order to better clear up this picture that you might have in your head, uh, I'd just like to point out that he has uh, one detail I haven't mentioned. He's 26 years old. So he's certainly not a child. I hope whatever picture you had in your head, uh, like whatever child you saw sitting on a couch or whatever with a, a gift in his lap, just aged like 15 to 20 years, like, boom, boom, and all of a sudden he's an adult. It's that collector's edition of Splitter Cell with the remote control airplane. Dude, I can't believe I had one of those in my, like, uh, storage space for so long. It was a collector's edition of a video game that actually came with, like, a model airplane that was like a B-52 bomber or some shit. Yeah, it was this huge plane. It's huge. We never even tried to fly it. So anyways, Heath had actually asked his girlfriend Randy, not Santa Claus, for the remote control airplane, and Randy sat there waiting for him to open his gift. And he did. And you can just like hear the wrapping paper tearing and feel his excitement. And when the wrapping paper fell to the floor, he sat there with his brand new Wii. That's right. Randy got him a Wii. Wii's pretty sweet. 2008 had only been out for like just over two years. It's still like the number one selling console at that time. What a great gift, right? Like maybe for someone else, but Heath wanted a radio controlled airplane. They had that Zelda game on there. It came out the same day. I know. I sat in front of Best Buy for 18 (laughs) hours. I had the money to the penny for a Wii and for Twilight Princess. And I went home. And I was like so fucking cold because it had rained and then snowed and I was soaked and then it froze. And I went home and I slept for like six hours. Then I woke up and I stayed under like six blankets and I played Twilight Princess until I passed out and it was amazing. Randy, she probably thought he could do the same thing. Uh, But yeah, Heath, that's not what he wanted. Heath wanted a radio controlled airplane. Now, I don't have the exact exchange that took place between boyfriend and girlfriend here. But I think it probably started with something like, what the fuck is this? Because obviously he's very disappointed and very shocked. And Randy probably said something like, it's a Wii. Now, maybe Randy wanted a Wii. That was my logic, too. Yeah, that's where my head went. She was like, I think Wii would have more fun with a Wii, so I'm going to get him a Wii. And that's maybe why she got it for Heath, which is a dirty trick to pull. Don't do that to people. Some things are said... Not exactly sure what. Heath makes it very clear that although the Wii is a wonderful product, he was really hoping for a radio-controlled airplane. And I think during the course of explaining that, he probably said the word bitch a few times or something like that. (gasps) Oh my sweet Jesus. Because at some point, Randy's just like, you know what? Get fucked. And she storms out. She's walking out. She got him a Wii. He could fly that around in the air for all she cared. She's leaving. But Heath was so angry that as she was walking out... He reached out, and he grabbed her by the hair on the back of her head so she could not leave. And when I read that, the first thing I thought is, oh, God, he's going to kill her. I just am imagining he's going to smash her in the head with the Wii. So Randy gets grabbed by the hair, and she turns around with him still holding the back of her hair, a la Jim Carrey from The Mask at the very end is how I picture it. Because as she turns around... Uh, she punches him right in the fucking face. <laughs> okay. And then a fight ensues. Like, it breaks out. It is full-blown fisticuffs. I cannot confirm or deny who called the cops in this case. But the articles infer that I read that the sound of the altercation was quite loud and the neighbors heard, which kind of insinuates that the neighbors were the one that called the police. When the cops showed up, what I really like about this topic is, like, I'm just spilling the tea on someone else's drama and it's super <laughs> fucking fun. God, okay. When the cops showed up, they were both bruised up really good, and they were both arrested on the spot. Uh, what they really got for Christmas for each other was his and hers assault charges. Oh, my God, it's so, so romantic. romantic. They were actually court-ordered not to contact one another as well. Right. When they were brought in for the arraignment, I believe, or preliminary hearing about 10 days later, uh, the judge also ordered Randy that she needed to get a job because she was no longer allowed to live with Heath. And they told her she had like 30 days to provide proof that she had submitted five applications to jobs. The court was basically ordering them to not be together anymore. And when I saw that, I was like, hmm, they're going to fuck real good now. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Just turn them into forbidden fruit, your honor. Well done. So when asked about it by the local newspapers, uh, Randy simply said, we just had a bad Christmas. She got you a freaking wee. Right? So, well, Randy's the lady. So Heath was the dude. 
And I just thought, like, yeah, no shit. That is a bad Christmas. We've all been there, though. We've all definitely gotten something we either didn't want, weren't expecting, and are not excited about, or not gotten something we really wanted. I think that's just something that comes with adulthood. Uh, So I'm curious, though. (laughs) I just, I imagine this year is like, oh, you wanted an Xbox uh, Series X? Here's a PS5. Yeah. No, no, no. No one's getting a PS5. It'll be like, here's a PS2. Oh, no. I would be okay with a PS2, though. You would be, of course, because you know what's on it, but still. In some cases, though, like, you have all those things happen at once. Like, you get something you don't want, you don't get the thing you want, and it's like the last gift you open, so it's extra disappointing. It's it's a very upsetting thing. I would never grab someone by the back of the hair, like, not consensually. I mean, that's definitely happened before, but I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> for me up. though, For me, though, <laughs> personally, like, three years in a row on Christmas, I had, like, a smaller thing that I wanted, where it was like a video game, I think. Uh, and people would ask me and say like, hey, what can I get for you for Christmas? And it, it's people that weren't Robin, so it's going to be something small. And I deliberately picked a game that was older or something that's not too expensive. And I tell them like, oh, I'm hoping for this. And three years in a row, I didn't get the thing I wanted. Like, I'd be opening my gifts and be like, all right. So that thing, everyone told me like, hey, don't buy that. Someone's getting it for you for Christmas. I wound up fucking not getting it. So I'm like, I guess I'm getting it for me for Christmas. Well, you so can thanks. Amazon gift cards, so. Just yeah, it just eventually have to buy it for yourself. But it's like, I could have been playing this way fucking earlier. Turns out, those three years that it happened, it was always a result of miscommunication between folks buying me gifts where someone would say like, hey, uh, I'm going to get that for him. Don't get that. And everyone else would be like, okay, right on. We'll pick something else. And then the person who would say, I'm going to get that, just decided not to get it and got something else. So, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Coordinate better, folks. Uh, I've, again, never grabbed anyone by the hair for, like, a gift I didn't like, but I'm just saying uh, I kind of understand the disappointment in that one. But before I get to the next topic, I am curious, uh, Robin, like, what is the most disappointing gift you wound up either getting or not getting for Christmas? Can you remember? No. I usually get pretty good gifts. I don't know. You're welcome. <laughs> Honestly, I can't really think of one time where I was, like, really disappointed. I think I've been really thrown off by gifts from people before. And, like, I've done White Elephant, so I've gotten pr- some pretty stupid stuff in my past. So I definitely think it's funny because I actually have a knife on my desk right now. And it's, like, an actual, like, switchblade. Like, it pops up. It's spring-loaded. And I got it in my stocking one year from my dad. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he knows me so well. And everyone else you like... put that in your stocking? And I was like, that's a stocking stuff. I'm like... For my dad, it is, yeah. So it's just one of those things where it just depends on who you're buying for. Don't get someone a Wii if they want a radio-controlled airplane, but it's a good thing she didn't get them a knife instead. Everyone's getting hand sanny in there. <laughs> hand sanitizers in their, all. In their stockings, yeah. All right, let's talk about some more Christmas crime. Have you ever had the realization on Christmas of, oh, shit, we need this? Like, regardless of what it is. I think for us on Thanksgiving before... We're like, oh, we need more oil. Yeah. Or like, you need something that's critical for like a side dish that or something was a like panic that. panic year. So it's like, that will happen sometimes. And I think a lot of us can relate to that. Well, in 2013, in North Charleston, South Carolina, on Christmas Eve, a one Helen Williams sitting at home peacefully had that realization. And she rang up her gentleman, whose name I could not locate, so I'm just going to call him the gentleman, who was eventually going to come home that Christmas Eve. She had assigned him with the task of, please pick up this one item. It is essential to Christmas, and Christmas will be ruined without it. It needs to be acquired. That item was beer. Beer. (laughs) What? Okay. Keep going. I'm just... Okay. So time goes on, and eventually the gentleman arrives home, and Helen says, where's the beer? And the gentleman says, I went everywhere, but all the places are closed. They close early. It's Christmas Eve. It reminds me of the episode of How I Met Your Mother, where Marshall and Lily have that thing where they always get a case of beer whenever they travel, and they bring back a case of beer or something. It's supposed to be like really gross beer too, isn't it? I don't remember, but there was that one year where she doesn't buy it, and she ends up going everywhere, and it can only find like a keg, and so she brings a keg. Uh, or something. I don't know. It was something like that where it's, we need beer. Clearly, but, we need to rewatch yeah. the series because I do not remember that episode. Well, this Marshall ends up getting the marching band. You don't remember that? Not at all. So this goes a little bit differently. So he says, hey, everywhere's closed. It's Christmas Eve. And Helen here just stares at him. And now I would like to cut to, hours later, 
uh, with the police arriving, knocking on the door. Oh, jeez. And Helen answers the door and asks what they want. And they take a look at Helen and say, why does that man behind you have blood all over him? And she states, and this is true, he fell. <laughs> yeah, he fell into my fists. <laughs> and they inquired further and they said he fell and she says he fell. And they ask, well, then why are you also covered in blood? <laughs> and I imagine there's this really long, awkward silence at this point, And Helen just replies, because he fell. <laughs> So they separate the two and they ask them questions individually about what happened. And the gentleman delivers a story, which is then eventually corroborated by Helen a little bit later. And he explains that when he came home and he let her know he could not obtain beer. Helen then grabbed a ceramic squirrel from the home and began to beat him with it. Imagine all those sharp edges on that thing. So he has bruises and cuts on him that show him placing his arms in defensive positioning. And he then elaborated that the reason he was cut so much and the reason there was so much blood is because while beating him with the ceramic squirrel, the squirrel broke. And she then began stabbing him with the ceramic squirrel repeatedly in the shoulder and chest where he had multiple stab wounds. And eventually the assault ceased. Again, I'm not sure here who called the cops, but I would imagine it was the gentleman. At this point, I'd just like to call him the dude because I'm not sure how gentlemanly he is. I just know that he's really fucked up and covered in blood. She was arrested and spent multiple days in jail before posting bail. I could not find a follow-up on the outcome of her eventual trial, however, which was quite disappointing because I really wanted to know whether or not he wound up dropping the charges against her. Maybe she was just an alcoholic and was like, I need... A case it's of very li- it's like it's mean it's very likely that when someone doesn't get something like alcohol and they beat the shit out of someone for it that alcohol abuse has somehow played a part in it but it's like I don't know I couldn't get a lot of details because there's a lot of articles that don't follow up on these it's just like police blotter you know it's just okay. people talking shit letting everyone know like here's what your neighbors were up to this holiday yeah. so unfortunately I couldn't find a whole lot of information on that but I thought hey this is a pretty Solid topic. I'm tossing it in. Uh, And I realize now that it seems like, it may seem like at least, like I'm picking cases where the lady beats the shit out of the dude because that's two in a row. And while I'm not condoning any type of domestic violence whatsoever, I'm kind of happy it's different than the frequent theme you see on true crime shows of a dude brutally murdering a woman. So to change gears a little bit here, let's go with the heist situation that I brought up earlier. I mentioned the movie Trapped in Paradise, so I was really excited when I found this one because I was like, oh yeah, this really fits. Uh, So a Christmas heist would be planned out and executed one week before the big day, so December 18th. And they made a movie about it, and it's called Die Hard. I hate you so much, but yes, that movie is fucking amazing. Everyone should watch it. So what time did this take place, or I should say when? 2014. Where? little place called Lake Wales. Florida. And you know when the headline starts with Florida Man, it's going to be pretty good. What's the headline? Did oh, it yeah. Start? It totally starts with Florida Man. Oh, man. Actually, it was Florida Men. One Gerard Dupree, which totally sounds like a heister, was exiting the local Walmart when suddenly the plan sprung into action. He collapsed to the floor near the exit and began shouting of pain, clutching at his chest. It appeared as if he was suffering from cardiac distress, most likely a heart attack, which sounds horrible, especially given how close it was to Christmas, right? Wrong. Fret not, dear listener. This was all part of the plan. At the same time, one Terrace Scott, friend to Gerard Dupree, had a shopping cart that they had loaded with carefully selected items at a nearby exit. So when Gerard hit the ground, screaming, Walmart staff and security sprung into action, just like they had planned. And Terrace was able to exit the store without paying, and no one was the wiser. At least, that's how they pictured this plan going down, okay? In actuality, here is what happened. The two entered the store together. They walked around the store, picked out several items and loaded it into the cart, They then got into place and Gerard walked away to a different exit and then yelled out. And I can only imagine based off of how this plan goes, he probably said something like, oh man, I think I'm having a heart attack over here. I don't know why he's from Boston. The pain is so bad. You can tell because I'm clutching my chest. Come look. And then he fell down and folks did go over there. Staff, security, 
shoppers and one shopper did what i think most people would do in a situation where someone yells out they're having heart pain and it's collapsed to the ground in a public place they called 911 and once terrace had left the store with the goods because they could totally see each other the whole time gerard jumped up and was like oh my chest still totally hurts but i think i'm gonna hit the old dusty trail by y'all and he just fucking leaves like nothing had happened to begin with so everyone that was watching was just like what the fuck just happened and as he went into the parking lot they're all just watching him as he meets up with someone and hastily loads the trunk with a bunch of items that weren't in fucking bags and they then leave together in the same car and retreated to their thieves den to divide up the loot and I imagine at this point, go the, ahead. What they should have done. Oh, there I, are so many things they should have oh done besides God. this. It's just, he could have just been like, please take me to the hospital. And just the, the other guy loads up the car by himself, goes off. No one knows. Could have gone anything. to the hospital. They could have been like, oh, you're fine. He could have been like, I don't know, doc, a lot of stress. They could be like, you probably had a panic attack. They let him go. And then he stiffs him on the bill, you know? But I imagine that they get back to their thieves den to divide up this loot. And I just picture that scene from the end of Ocean's Eleven where they all watch the fountain go off to that really beautiful music. Yeah. It's just like that. They stood there. They go over the hall. And they made off with oh, a God. leapfrog tablet. Shut up. A Barbie glam vacation house. Oh, my God. And, of course, the big score, a Barbie car. So they were taking this stuff for their kids? I don't know. One of them was taking some stuff for their That's kids, so I think. That's so sad. It's a pretty sweet heist if you make off with any kind of car. I'm just saying. The grand total for their daring and successful heist, $369. Maybe they just really wanted to make their kid happy. These dudes were clearly pros. And as they were arguing over which days each of them would have access to the Barbie car, not really, I put that in there, the police showed up. Really, they did, because the whole fucking thing was on the security cameras at Walmart, including them getting into the same car and driving away together, with the license plate still on the car and clearly visible to all. The cops got there early, like right after they left, because they had been called, and during the call, when they're like, oh, we need an ambulance, the dude just got up and walked away, and they're like, um, okay, like, we'll come check it out, and they arrested them literally hours later. An interesting note about the total of the heist, $369, it's actually very important. Anything under a certain amount in all states, and it's different depending on the state, is considered petty theft, which is a misdemeanor. Anything over 300 though, right, is a felony. Well, here's the thing, and I'll get to it. A second-degree misdemeanor gets 60 days max, like that's all you get. And you can do like restitution where you have to give back the object, or if you destroy it, you have to pay him back. First-degree petty theft is one year, possibly in jail, and a loss of your license. Uh, however, if you go above that specific amount, uh, you get grand theft and that is a felony and it can result in five years and a $5,000 fine as well as restitution and a bunch of other shit. Uh, the amount of money that is the threshold in Florida at the time was $300. So they just cleared it. If they would have put back one of those items, they would not have faced felony charges. They would have faced misdemeanor charges. And what's weird though, is I was like, I'm going to confirm this. And I went to a bunch of like, uh, like law practice websites and most of them said 300 and one of them said 750 and the one that said 750 i was like this one's fancier so i actually went to the government website and checked out it's like statue like 801.624 and it's been updated recently and now it's 750 so they would not have actually faced felony charges had they hmm. done this recently i'm not saying if you live in florida to go steal 369 dollars worth of shit yeah you should probably make it 749 dollars worth of shit um please don't go steal but yeah so they took just enough to, one, get caught really, really easily because everyone noticed. Because the Barbie car is fucking huge. Like, it takes up the whole cart. And, of course, to both face felony charges for Christmas, which is just sad because they took such, like, heartwarming items, as yeah, Robin has pointed I, I out. Mean, it, they're probably, they're like, I don't want disappoint, to disappoint my kid. Like, I got to get this stuff. Dude, help me Adopt get Adopt them a pet. Because typically it's super cheap and it's just so sweet. It's, if you've never watched early episodes of The Simpsons, Homer does everything he can to try and find extra money to make his My... family's like Halloween or Halloween Christmas really, really special. And he goes to the dog track and he puts all of his money on a dog and it comes in last place. And then the dog follows him home and that's Santa's little helper and that's their dog. The thing that I don't like about giving pets as gifts is it's a lot of the time those dogs or cats just end up going back to the shelter. 
You've never heard that before? I'm just saying if you're giving a pet as a gift, you should not be allowing that to happen. So Yeah, like, you, it, it's something that you have to discuss with the person before you give them that gift because... Animals are. I mean, if you're if you're getting like, a Barbie car, it's clearly for a kid, and you have to tell your kid like, "Hey, I'm giving you this thing. It's a big responsibility, but it's one of the most rewarding things you'll ever have." So, like, I think that's a better option than stealing shit from fucking Walmart. That's yeah. just me, though. That's my parenting style that I have not yet had to <laughs> employ. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, animals are creatures, living creatures. They aren't objects to just give away. Okay, gotcha. Thanks for that. <laughs> So last but not least, I have one more Christmas crime to end on, and this one goes back to December 11th, 2004, where you might ask, this one actually takes place in Atlanta, Georgia. So there is a lot of disputed accounts on what happened in this one. I found it all over the internet, but I'm going to go with details that seem to be consistent across the board, as well as eyewitness accounts taken and quoted during the actual time period where this had happened, rather than people... You know, putting it on lists for fucking BuzzFeeds is like craziest crimes. I actually, like, got into more of the actual crime itself. So that said, this takes place at a local mall in downtown Atlanta, where folks were shopping, acquiring gifts for their friends and family for the holiday season. And I'm sure they're probably buying some stuff for their enemies, too, because sometimes you have to buy for people you don't like, which sucks, but it just happens. Now, while they were there, someone else was also there. That person's name, St. Nick. Also known as Chris Kringle. What other names does he have? He has a lot, but I didn't want to turn into that scene from San- The Santa Claus where he names them all off when he's being questioned by the fucking police or whatever. So, you don't remember that? I think I do. Vaguely. I haven't seen any of those movies in a long ass time. Someone posted a gif of, like, Tim Allen from a Christmas movie today and everyone's like, I don't know what that movie is. And they're like, no one does. It's Christmas at the Cranks. No one saw it. So, if anyone out there has seen Christmas at the Cranks, let us know because i just like to know that at least one person saw that movie. Anyways, that's right, folks. Santa Claus was at the mall. What a crazy place for him to be, right? I mean, he was coming to town. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and shatter the illusion really fast. It was a man dressed as Santa. It wasn't the actual Santa Claus. This man's name is Elkin Donnie Clark, 49 at the time. Also at the mall was a 74-year-old woman named Annie Ruth Nelson. And witnesses say that she was handing out religious flyers at the mall. I, it is not known 100% for sure what spurred this particular incident, but according to Santa Claus, Annie came over and started going through his possessions and started taking boxes of Hershey's chocolates from him. I think he said she took 29 out of his bag, wow. which totals like $149 apparently. <laughs> so I'm not sure which Hershey's chocolate he had, but apparently they're the fucking good ones. It should be noted that no witnesses that saw this incident when interviewed could confirm this. And police were unable to confirm this as well, and I'll get into that in a little bit later. What is known is that an argument began between Santa and Annie because he thought his stuff was being taken, and Annie started yelling back at him. Then, inexplicably, Santa Claus produced a 2 by 4 I mean, you do you have any idea how much he can put in his sack? I have no idea where this 2 by 4 came from in real life. Apparently, he's fucking hacksaw Jim Duggan and just travels around with a 2 by 4 He's a wrestler that always came out with a 2 by 4 Okay, shoulder, I was like, I who the heck is that? that? <laughs> Andrew out there is like, fuck yeah, hacksaw Jim Duggan. Uh, but yeah, he, he busts out this 2 by 4 and then proceeds to strike Annie in the face with it, knocking her unconscious. He pulls out a 2 by 4 and hits a 74-year-old woman in the face with it. At this point, one... Aisha Albertson, an eyewitness, starts yelling at Santa, asking him, why would he do that? And to stop, because he looks like he's going to hit her again while she's unconscious on the ground. That's fucked. I swear, this is a quote from her. Quote, then he comes at me with a boulder, and my roommate starts screaming my name, and I start backing up. And then I told him, like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And we ran and called the police. Like, what the fuck? Honestly, this makes me feel like this was actually santa claus because of his ability to randomly summon a two by four and then a fucking boulder at will apparently he has a bag of infinite holding it's just a bag of holding (laughs) it's infinite it's like the (laughs) thing that hermione has okay gotcha sticks his hand in there pulls out stuff so once he scares off this witness which i think is what santa would do he covered his tracks pretty well he grabs his stuff and he nopes the fuck out and another witness called the police And as he sees Santa Claus run away, he decides he's going to follow Santa Claus while giving updates as to where he's at. So as Santa exits the mall, he starts taking off his outfit 
to try and hide from the approaching authorities, not aware he's being tailed. He exits the mall in plain clothes and crosses Broad Street uh, and then starts to run. And luckily, at that moment, police arrived and were able to identify the culprit because of the eyewitness who followed him. Oh, that's cool. And they were able to apprehend him. Annie was taken to Grady Hospital and recovered from her injury. Santa Claus, a.k.a. Elkin Donnie Clark, was charged with two counts of aggravated assault. Because of the boulder. I don't know. I mean, I think, I don't know if you get charged with aggravated assault for threatening someone. But maybe something else happened with the cops. I couldn't really dig into it. All anyone wanted to talk about was Santa hit an old lady with a two by four. <laughs> okay. The police did interview all the witnesses to the event and no one could confirm that Annie stole or touched anything that belonged to Santa. And apparently whatever footage they were able to obtain from the mall didn't show this either. They said it was not confirmed by anyone and was only in his story. It did show a man in a Santa costume. The footage that is, it did show a man in a Santa costume hitting a 74 year old woman in the face with a two by four. And I will say, I know I've been doing this show for too long now because I tried way too hard to find the footage of Santa hitting an old lady with a two by four. And I'm sorry to say that I could not locate it, but like, Hey, I think we can all picture it and agree. It's equal parts awful and bizarre with a little bit of hilarious tossed in. Cause it is so fucking weird. And I honestly, as I was going through these, I was like, this is really Christmas heavy but every time I tried to find a Hanukkah crime, I didn't really bump into any. And it kept kind of like pushing me back towards Christmas. So I was like, all right, whatever. And that's when I found Santa Assault Old Lady. I was like, okay, like I guess I'll go with that one to be my last one. So I still had really a lot of fun doing this topic. I hope it was a little bit less serious than some of the topics I've covered this year. It's definitely no Manson Family Murders. And it's not as bad as the Christmas murders we covered last year. So I do hope you guys all enjoyed Christmas crimes. I uh, definitely enjoyed it. Nice. Yeah. Very interesting nice stuff. Crimes. There are so many out there that just have no information whatsoever. It's just like a bunch of shit talking like apparently, you know, this happened at someone's house and it's just hearsay on lists from like BuzzFeed, but it's people that are on staff saying this would happen at my house one time. I'm like, I don't know who any this of these one people time are. At band camp. So I'm like, I need documented arrests. I need good stuff. So uh, there's definitely going to be a lot more. So if we're still around come Christmas season next year, uh, I'd definitely like to hit back up cool. the Christmas crimes thing because there's so many to go over. So nice. Right on. I hope you all enjoyed that. Again, we're going to have our story time episode release as normal. So we'll say Merry Christmas to you folks a million more times, but uh, all of them, happy holidays. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate all of you. If any of you have a story, paranormal, supernatural, spooky, cryptid related, uh, alien, extraterrestrial, or even, I don't know, true crime, feel free to send it to us. You can email storytime at scarish.com or go to our website, scarish.com and click on contact us. If you fill out that form, it comes directly to us. And you can also hit us up on any of our social medias. Facebook is facebook.com slash scarish podcast. Twitter is at scarish pod and Instagram is at scarish podcast. Robin, for folks who would like to donate to us, how can they do so? You can go to patreon.com slash scarish podcast. Right now I have a form up for all patrons who want to purchase some of the patron merch, like patron exclusive merch that has been in seasons past so there's like the mothman keychain um right now we have like a krampus keychain with a krampus magnet uh, which is the biggest magnet i've ever made uh, or designed and then um there's also the wendigo one which is really popular and you can purchase all those things by becoming a patron if you wish uh patreon.com slash scary podcast tiers start at one dollar do and you also get ad-free episodes, so that's also super cool. Uh, if you don't like the whole monthly subscription thing, you can also go to coffeeko-fi.com slash scarishpodcast, and those are one-time donations. All your donations go to helping us upgrade our studio setup, kind of keep us going, keep us motivated, give us a little bit more time to spend on uh, recording these episodes, because uh, life is hard. <laughs> it is indeed. So, so yeah. but all of you listening and supporting us definitely have made it a lot easier and we hope we have made your 2020 a little bit easier as well so thank you one more time to uh, everyone who supports us and listens uh it's amazing to see how many folks are out there so uh i think that's just about everything we have for this episode so robin go ahead and sign us out keep on creeping on and we'll talk to you guys later bye-bye